five major players were involved in a sinister blacklisting operation. HR people banded together around the UK. They set up an association called the Consortium Association where they blacklisted union members for decades. Balfour Beatty, the company, won't allow union officials onto the site to talk to the workers there oh, uh, to right. try and organise them. So, it, so they're being very anti-union. Um, and we've actually got uh, national agreements that says that we are allowed onto the site to talk. Frankly, without, without that ability, I don't think any, any company can say they're clean on the issue of blacklisting. And I don't think any, any company can say they're, they're an ethical operator. Uh, so what we're calling for is, is, uh, is, is we want access to, to this site and to all, all other Balfour Beatty and construction sites in education and infrastructure. If they've got nothing to hide, we could go on site like we can in any other sector where we've got a national agreement. We can get on site, we can get access and we can talk to our members. We can talk to the non-union members, find out what their problems are. We can then appoint union safety reps as the agreement says, but we're not going to get that unless we get access to site to see our members and organise and the employers know that. This is actually a site boundary here. Yeah, and? What's, what's your problem? I would like you not in the road doing this sort of stuff. Well, we, have the the right okay. sir, we have the lawful right to protest, sir. We have the lawful right to protest. Okay. Well, we're, protesting on a, we're protesting on a valid cause. All those, yeah, all those, all all those blacklisted workers, here. all those blacklisted workers at Balfour Beatty. We always knew there was a blacklist in operation, but it was always very difficult to prove it. And it's only recently, with the uncovering of the Consultant Association uh, and uh, the raiding of their office, uh, where we managed to get hold of these files. And my file, for example, had all sorts of inflammatory information on it about me being a troublemaker, uh, me being a, a member of a, a legal political uh, party, um, the fact that I went on lots of demonstrations and lots of meetings. They give me my file, heavily, heavily redacted. Oh, he's a good worker, an excellent worker, but he's uh, a trade unionist. Watch him, he's, he's a leftist, he's an activist. Don't deal with him. He has too many health and safety issues. I've thrown off about seven or eight jobs. Some people came up to me and said, oh, sorry, you're no longer suited, you've got to go. Others come up and I said to them, well, what is the reason? They said, oh, we can't tell you. I was working on a Taylor Woodrow site in East Croydon, 1969, when I was 21. I was elected shop steward for the carpenters. We were dissatisfied with the bonus scheme that was in operation. Um, and it was very poor, low wages and so on. And so we went on a work to rule, which means that we banned overtime and we just worked uh, normally rather than trying to work to the bonus scheme. And this went on for a couple of weeks and it was quite successful. I was sacked for allegedly threatening a crane driver and a concrete mixing operative. And they both denied that I'd even spoken to them. So all the carpenters immediately came out on strike and we were out on strike for two weeks. In the end, we had to cave in and I went down the road. And according to my files, that's when I was entered onto the blacklist as being a troublemaker. I found it difficult to get onto any sizable site afterwards. I left the industry when I was about 26, 27. blacklisting our union members can't get work just for being logging to a union and being a member. All we're about is getting better holiday sickness, getting rid of umbrella companies, making sure you've got stability and good work in terms of conditions. Nothing wrong with that. So these big companies are making profits, £116 million bail for BT made last year. And look what they're paying the blokes on the site. Look how they treat them. It's wrong and it's got to stop. Right. I'm going to have to send you away, yeah? Yeah. All right. Right. Uh, I'll ring the office now, probably we're going to schedule for later today, if not tomorrow, yeah? Christmas 1969, I managed to get onto a very large John Lang construction site. I was on there for eight days and one of the foremen came up to me and said, um, we're transferring you to another site. I refused to go, they sacked me. All the carpenters went out, uh, all the carpenters went on a work to rule immediately. I did a one person picket outside the site with placards. Um, 
John Lang Construction then sacked all the carpenters and brought in uh, a labour-only subcontractor, a notorious company called Whelan and Wright. That led to a major dispute which lasted for three months. The Amalgamated Society of Woodworkers union leadership sold us down the river basically by saying that as long as we allow the subcontractors the opportunity to join the union, then the dispute was over. And of course most of them didn't want to join the union. On my file it uh, made reference to me allegedly causing uh, problems um, at a, a Ruskin College summer school. Where did they get that information from? They could have only have got it from union officials, uh, Amalgamated Society of Woodworkers union officials, who were actually organising the summer school. I hadn't heard about this blacklisting, but when I read about it, it was really shocking um, how people's livelihoods have been ruined. Uh, people have apparently killed themselves over the issue. Um, so it's really serious. And, very shady. We've got a fair amount of students here today so I think it's becoming more of a thing that students are kind of noticing and getting involved with. No apologies actually come from the employers itself. The employers said they were going to uh, get people for retraining and all that I've never been offered any retraining or, or offer of a job and I know quite a few other colleagues who have been blacklisted haven't been offered it either. We believe there's still networking going on in the agencies that are buffer. They're blacklisting our union members. We want direct employment, people getting holiday pay, proper sick pay. None of this having to set yourself up as a public limited company, being uh, exploited and then you're living in fear and to rub insult into injury besides employer's insurance uh, national insurance, your, your own national insurance, employer's liability, putting your own holidays aside, there's the, the thing that's gelling all the workers together across all the sites, whether they're in a union or not, having to pay for your wages. That's disgraceful. You're having to pay between 15 and 30 quid a week just to get your own wages. Some third parties taking that money. That's, that's a disgrace. Government should be banning this type of employment practice. We will keep these protests going and we'll make it uncomfortable. We'll spread the word out there to all the sectors. The organising department's running a campaign right across the, across the country on uh, construction sites and education and infrastructure. And we're really trying to, you know, we've got 100 organisers behind this. We're really putting proper resources in trying to organise the sector. We're here today to remind you to start talking to Unite. We're a signatory to the CIJC Working Rule Agreement and we ain't going away!